We welcome that very much. Now, we're all aware of the double, maybe even triple threats to improving agriculture, the current pandemic, both severe consequences for agricultural markets and a change in the approach to agro-food systems, how we produce, process, distribute, trade and consume our food is more acute than ever. And then there are the longer lasting threats of climate change, including a loss of biodiversity and soil degradation, only to mention a couple. So if we want to be able to actually feed 10 billion people on this globe by 2050, if we actually want to achieve the UN sustainable goal of having zero hunger by 2030, then this year is uh, decisive and our reactions to the COVID-19 crisis as well. And that in a year when we have the fifth year running of increasing hunger in the world. So we need innovation. That is something that we do need even in an old and traditional area like agriculture. And one of that is, of course, the pathway to digitization. We're going to explore some of the solutions that are already out there in the field today and that have come to the fore during the last year. Uh, but then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, there is the second issue, which um, has come very close to everybody's attention. Zoonosis have become almost a household word, especially amongst the experts here, of course. The One Health approach might be the answer to that challenge. So these are a couple of the points that we're going to be discussing with our fantastic panel in a moment. But just to get us started, we're very happy to have a video message by Julia Klöckner, Klöckner the German Minister of Food and Agriculture, and of course, she is the host at the GFFA. Hallo, ich grüße Sie sehr herzlich und ich werde es auch live machen. A warm welcome to you. This will not only be a video message, uh, this will be a live welcome message. Therefore, Director General Chu, colleagues, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to you to the GFFA. Today's exchange is important to draw the lessons from the current pandemic, but in also, also to prevent future pandemics. And therefore, my warmest thanks go to the organizers of this high-level panel, and a warm thanks also goes to the FAO. Ladies and gentlemen, in recent years, 70% of new diseases have been of animal origin, Ebola, Zika virus, HIV, influenza, or also the novel coronavirus are the best known examples of this. And this shows that the diseases of animal origin pose the greatest threat that is so nosing. Zoonosis of pandemic proportions will continue to increase unless we act now. Therefore, we must close ranks to curb the transmission of infections in and between humans and animals. And we, as agricultural ministers, dear colleagues, we play a critical role in this respect. Animal health is in our responsibility. And in my opinion, two measures are therefore vital. First of all, we should consistently implement and comply with the One Health approach in all regions and countries around the world and also at global level. One Health means to not take a separate view of human and animal medicine, but to take an all-encompassing view of them, because our achievements in minimizing antibiotic resistance show how important this approach is. And secondly, we should establish an independent expert panel operating at international level, because we rely on scientific expertise, but we also rely on jointly coordinated action. And Germany wants to do its bit in this. Together with France, 
we have launched a joint initiative in this respect to promote international cooperation with all stakeholders, with all international organizations such as the FAO, OIE and WHO, but also with another important partner, the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP. And I'm looking forward to hearing your ideas of innovations which can help make our food systems more resilient. Food security is a major goal also for peacekeeping. And how to prevent pandemics in the future, that's our great challenge, our task, and we want to be committed and fight for this together. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the good moderation through the day by the panel. And I'm looking forward to meeting you live and in reality again soon. But let's not uh, rest until then, but let's stay connected and discuss with each other. I hope we will have lots of good ideas and I'm keen on listening to you and on learning new things of actually being here live uh, in our discussion. Uh, absolute yeah. uh, pleasure to see you. Uh, and uh, good luck uh, for the minister conference uh, at the end of the week. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the time at which I would love to introduce uh, the panel to you. And we have actually prepared a video portraying each and every one. Very good. Chidongyu took office as the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in 2019. Before coming to FAO, Chu served as China's Vice Minister of Agriculture and Rural Affairs, where one of his achievements was to promote inclusive and innovative development and make sure information and communication technologies were available in rural areas. Chu formulated action plans aimed at poverty reduction, disaster reduction and prevention, women empowerment and agritourism. Jamshid Abdul Hakimovic Hajayev has been the Minister of Agriculture of the Republic of Uzbekistan since January 2019. At the end of 2017, Hajayev was appointed as the Minister for the Foreign Trade of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Throughout his career in the Central Bank of Uzbekistan, Mr. Hajayev went through a professional path from the leading specialist of the Department for Control over Foreign Exchange Operations and External Relations to the Director of the Department for International Reserves Management. Christian Hoffer has been the Director of the Federal Office for Agriculture of the Swiss Confederation since 2019. Previously, he served as an Assistant Director responsible for the Direct Payments and Rural Development Directorate. Mr. Hoffer held positions in the private sector and academia. He grew up on a farm in Banwell in the Bernese Aburagao region. Eric Fearwald joined the Syngenta Group in June 2016 as Chief Executive Officer. He held managerial positions in other companies like DuPont, Nalco Company, Ecolab and others. He is also Chairman of the Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture. Angela Tokozili Didiza has been the Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development of South Africa since 2019. She was the first woman Deputy Minister of Agriculture during the late President Nelson Mandela's tenure. She has recently been elected as the chairperson of the African Union Ministerial Specialised Technical Committee on Agriculture, Rural Development, Water and Environment. And that's the panel that I have the pleasure of uh, discussing with right at the moment. Uh, we already see the uh, general Dr. Director General uh, getting ready and getting started uh, because uh, he's going to be addressed first. Now, let me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, take you all along. We're going to have three main issues that we're going to have as sort of headlines uh, for our discussion points. And first of all, we're going to talk about COVID-19 and uh, food security and innovation. So uh, let's concentrate on what happened last year, but also take uh, uh, the next steps into the future. Food security was the one thing that everybody looked for last year. Was it in danger? Was it not in danger? One of the questions. Most of the time, uh, people were actually quite happy with the outcome because despite the fact that we these days have longer supply chains all around the globe, normally agribusiness uh, was able to bring about proper supply chains to bring about the produce to the consumer. And of course, uh, the question that was uh, at, uh, um, at a problem uh, was 
was the question of income. Could people actually pay for the food that was out there? But that was just uh, one of the general uh, aspects. So as a first panelist, I would like to introduce Chu Dongyu. Well, I don't need to introduce him, actually, um, as far as Director General. And uh, uh, Mr. Dongyu, um, we have been he hearing about uh, the innovation that has come about with the response to the pandemic. So where do you actually see innovation happening? Um, you yourself have um, tweeted last uh, couple of days that 2021 is the year of continued reform, efficiency and enhanced effectiveness. So how do we need innovation? How we, can we apply it? And what do we need for the post-pandemic recovery? OK. Uh can you hear me? Absolutely. OK, great. Uh, Stan, thanks for the uh, uh, host of GFAFA, uh, my dear uh, Minister Jogi. Uh, 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 and also, I, I'm so glad to see my colleagues from Uzbekistan and the South Africa. When you talk about the uh, innovation uh, at large, we have uh, three categories of innovation. Innovation on policy, innovation on technology, innovation on the business model. So during the pandemic, I think you can see the, the people and also business and the civil community to uh, respond to the COVID-19 pandemic for food security and for food supply. And innovation, it's not a theoretical topic. It's a reality of efficiency, and effectiveness. So I think first we need the innovation to produce more and better, uh, to improve the productivity of agricultural food or the commodities. Of course, we used to depend on more long distance trade, but still we did depend on the international trade function cross continent for the major commodities, especially step food. Uh, sugar for long distance traveling uh, and, the, and the trade. Second, we have to improve, improve the, our own production locally, especially for perishable uh, products. Uh, and of course, it's, it's challenging. A lot of countries, they depend on the import some uh, vegetables and fruit. That's really big impact on this supply chain and with the high increase of the price. That's also happening even in Europe and in the city of Africa, Asia, and, the, and the Central Asia, my friends from uh, Uzbekistan and uh, South Africa. You can uh, with them that. And the third, as an innovation, we should have the farmers to build the resilience, you know, to use the more, uh, innovative products of the agricultural input, you name it, seeds, fertilizer, chemicals, uh, and others, and even machinery, which also helps you improve the efficiency and the productivity. And then come to the policy. I think the uh, uh, minister from South Africa, we worked together during the past year, pandemic. We worked together with the Africa Uni and also uh, individual members we really to have them to build the innovative way how to address the new uh, policy to encourage all the sectors, uh, clear, key players to play the more agile role. You know, you need the policy to help them. And that's really if the country and the member have a more agile reaction response, and then farmers and the food uh, sector are really benefit. And this, and the third is a business model. That's why the innovation, not only technology innovation, and also you need the uh, uh, new business model based on the digital uh, 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 food and agriculture. That's really helps for the uh, able uh, citizens to have uh, access to the food. It was not the question before, but now they do in the lockdown and the pandemic the people more depend on the digital uh, business model. That's from the farmer's field to the 
consumers uh, uh, play. So I think, in short, innovation should have them from production to the process, to the supply chain, to the uh, uh, who sell the market uh, and uh, who are value chain, and also to speed up efficiency of supply uh, uh, and also speed up the uh, uh, efficient of uh, uh, production uh, as a whole. So I think that the information sharing, that's why the FAO, we, yeah. with the member of support, we had the established the, uh, during past years, huh? established agricultural marketing information systems, AMRS. That's now is really playing the key role for marketing transparency and also to keep the international trade function. It's very important. And talk about the uh, uh, trade partner uh, uh, cooperation uh, for one health. Also, we need innovation. We need the innovation on the how to minimize the risk of the residues of the uh, input, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, hormones uh, or animal hormones uh, and and the uh, uh, growth regulators and so on. So I think I hope through this GFF, we have a debate and get some consensus how to speed up the innovation. Uh, and, and that's really helps for build back better and build back uh, greener. And, and also so with more production. That's essential for the development. Okay, great. Here. Lovely. Thank you so much for uh, sort of uh, giving an eagle's view um, and sort of also mirroring uh, how international cooperation uh, was actually part and parcel of solutions uh, during the pandemic. Now, let's uh, deep dive and have a look at country level. And uh, for that, I'd like to address uh, Toko Divisa. Um, uh, Madam, um, we have a, an imbalance uh, in South Africa. Observers say um, that there was an absolute export boom as far as citrus fruits uh, are concerned. In fact, 10% more uh, than in the year before, in 2019. On the other hand, um, you did have uh, a slight problem insofar as producers of meat, poultry, milk, potato, for example, are now sort of faced with stockpiles. Um, so how do you, from a ministerial point of view, deal with these imbalances in the market? You're mute. Uh, yeah, yes, um, that's probably one of the most uh, quoted words uh, of 2020. You're mute, uh, but now I'm muted. <laughs> thank okay. you very much. Uh, I would like to recognize you, Program Director, and thank you for this time to be able to make an intervention. I also would like to recognize a uh, her Excellency, Ms. Julia Klochner, the German Federal Minister of uh, Food and Agriculture, who has just welcomed us and actually gave pointed intervention on what this forum needs to address. I also want to recognize my brother, uh, FAO Director General, uh, Dr. Ju, uh, Chu Dongyu, as well as the other panelists, the Minister of Uzbekistan. I must say that this is indeed an important uh, area that we need to reflect on how, as a country, maybe sharing our experience, we manage through this uh, pandemic, as you have indicated, the imbalances that indeed were experienced amongst the sectors. First and, in, uh, and foremost, one of the things we did in the beginning was, as part of the country's intervention, we looked at two strategies, on how, on one hand, we balance livelihoods, and on the other hand, we actually ensure that we save lives. So that was the broad strategy of government. And in doing so, we located agriculture at the center, one in terms of essential food production to be able to feed the nation and open the borders to be able to continue trade on essential foods in particular with the region and our trading partners. We were also able to be innovative in engaging our uh, partners, particularly with whom we export and from those from whom we import, to ensure that we can actually use electronic systems to be able to validate whatever information in terms of the goods that we're trading. And I think that helped. But it is also important to appreciate that within that mix, 
as an African continent, we had to look at how we appreciate what were the constraints and how we could unlock them both from the policy point of view as well as in terms of trade. So on the 16th of April, we worked with the FAO and the ministers of agriculture in the continent to identify where there were bottlenecks. As you know, some of the uh, member countries in the continent are actually um, dependent on imports for their uh, food security. So it was necessary for us to look at how at a regional level, but also engaging other partners externally, we open up opportunities uh, for trade so that those who are reliant on imports may be able to still get uh, their goods on time. I must say that uh, going forward, one of the things that we have observed from the train point of view is that some of the countries in dealing with the um, pandemic, the measures they put in place actually created what you call um, backlogs or actually surpluses in other sectors where now we've got a large uh, consignment of uh, products that we need to deal with in the domestic market. But importantly, we were also able as a continent to make sure that in the midst of that pandemic, we continue to emphasize on the implementation of the Africa continental free trade area so that we actually do not lose time lag in being able uh, to implement. I think those issues and working with the industry at every given point, ensure that our stakeholders in the agribusiness, in the farm sector, were part and parcel of the decisions that government took. Thank you very much. I know three minutes is not enough to say more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, we, we need to get everybody on board and then also have a slight discussion. And uh, I uh, see that uh, business is there as well. So uh, we're quite happy um, uh, that everybody is on board now. And with that, let's change continents, but let's stay on uh, the policy level let's stay um, on uh, what government can do. Uh, let's look at Uzbekistan. And uh, Uzbekistan is actually a country in transit. Uh, formerly, Uzbekistan was a net food importer. Now it is trying to intensify homegrown production with a certain view, of course, to smallholder development, extending agricultural base and building up an innovative system. So, uh, Minister Kodaya, how did you actually respond to C19 and what kind of new thinking were you able to implement and will take you into 2021? Thank you, moderator. Good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to greet uh, my friend, Mr. Tzu Dongyu, FAO Director General, and uh, my colleague, uh, Mrs. Faulkner and, uh, of course, uh, the colleagues from uh, South Africa, uh, Mrs. Dibiza. Uh, so, when thinking about this question, uh, I found myself uh, reflecting on what innovation actually means. And uh, it can mean the introduction of a, a new product uh, or technology, but uh, it can also be about a new way of doing something or even a new way of thinking. So indeed, the disruption of live foods and food supply chains in Uzbekistan uh, due to the pandemic has inevitably had an impact on access to the certain agriculture and uh, food products for many Uzbek farmers and consumers. And we have tried to respond to this challenge in several, uh, I would say, uh, innovative ways. And this uh, actually included the introducing a range of a new social safety net programs to assist vulnerable groups with an access to the essential food purchases and expansion of the existing social support programs to partially offset the loss uh, of uh, the incomes. And a targeted measures to stabilize the consumer food prices, primarily through the enhanced use of the national strategic food reserves, uh, upgrading of some of the existing green corridors at the borders with our uh, neighbors, 
and a streamlining a str a certain administrative procedures for agri-food traders, reduction of the sum of agri-food import tariff rates, and introduction of a payment holidays for some of our farmers on the credit repayments. And the pandemic has highlighted the interconnectivity of agri-food trade and markets and the mutual interdependence of Uzbekistan as a double landlocked country and the need to work more closely with our neighbors to ensure the regional food security, particularly in times of the crisis. The pandemic has also highlighted the need uh, to enhance the national food security, mon monitoring and sur surveillance systems, and to, re to revisit the role and the future needs and requirements of our strategic food reserve systems as well. These systems require investment in a new digital systems that ensure more rapid data transfer and dissemination. As uh, my friend, FIL Director General, has just indicated, now we are um, from uh, net exporting of many uh, our agriculture products. We try now we are rethinking in 2021 how we are going to uh, decrease the export in, in terms of the um, placing uh, the other uh, needed uh, agriculture products, for instance, potatoes, because we had like um, uh, we were a net importer of potatoes uh, around 400,000 tons, but now we are thinking uh, in decreasing some of our, of our other products and helping the farmers with the new programs uh, in, in having uh, more area uh, to plant the potatoes. And of course, uh, another important area is that the government of Uzbekistan has now committed the significant resources to support the gradual upgrade of our agriculture research system, enhance the agriculture education and training services, and establish an effective farm advisory service network to help the farmers and agribusiness to develop and grow their businesses. We are planning this in an integrated way, guided by the best international practices in the development of the agriculture knowledge and innovation systems, otherwise known as the IT system. And we believe mm -hmm. that the, this system approach will be the most sustainable uh, way to promote the gradual modernization and the innovation required in the uh, Uzbek agri-food uh, sector. And only uh, through improving uh, the knowledge of our farmers, we can ensure the safety and the hygiene of our uh, agriculture products. And we are also investing in the agri uh, upgrading Mr. of regional... Yes, it's just, uh, I'm just uh, going very fast. So we are upgrading <laughs> our uh, agro-logistic network system. And of course, uh, we are uh, using now the FAO platform to communicate with our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm sorry, but I see that we only have half an hour left and so much uh, more to say. And we're already getting great questions uh, in uh, at the moment. Uh, so let me continue and, and go uh, one step further. Now, just sort of concentrating on really innovative and new approaches. And uh, let's look at Switzerland. Uh, and we have a, a very interesting uh, system there. It's called an animal tracing database. Uh, and of course, it does what it says on the tin. It is tracing animals in order to ensure both uh, food uh, security and also at the same time prevent zoonosis. So uh, we have here Christian Hofer, the director of uh, the Federal Office uh, of Agriculture of the Swiss Confederation. So uh, how do you actually do it and what kind of double, treble, maybe even fourfold service uh, do you expect from this tracing system? Yeah, thank you for the question. And first, I would like to thank to the FAO for the invitation and the opportunity to uh, offer to Switzerland to contribute um, to this panel. Indeed, uh, you mentioned our animal tracing database. Um, and it was set up to ensure the traceability of all farm animals to ensure food safety and prevent the spreading of animal diseases. Uh, it is an important step stone in our national One Health system approach to respond uh, to global challenge such as the COVID pandemic. 
individual cattle, sheep, goats, and horses are identified by their uh, unique ear tag or chip number. Animal keepers are obliged to report the birth, all movements, including imports, imports and exports, as well as death or slaughtering of their animal online. A notable recent development is the increasing popularity of using this information in the animal tracing database in third-party systems. Uh, in order to facilitate this exchange of information with the database, the federal administration, and administration develops an, uh, and offers a licensable interface. This enables animal keepers to share information with other information systems and thus not having to record the same data multiple times in different systems. A good example of improved data management and reduced administrative uh, burden on farmers brought by innovation and digitalization. Providing well-targeted financial support to innovative projects is one component of our national approach to improve agriculture and food innovation ecosystems. According to our federal constitution, sustainable development of the agriculture and food sector is the top priority of domestic agriculture policy. Positive transformation of agriculture and food system towards more sustainability is indeed essential for achieving long-term food security, ensuring fair livelihoods of farmers and food producers, but also to increase re resilience to shocks such as climate change and, core, and of course, global pandemics like COVID-19. Innovation in all its forms um, is critical for food system transformation. Strong innovation, friendly ecosystems are key to generating solutions which meet practical challenges and have a um, scalable impact. Mr. Within the Hofer? framework, yeah. Uh, very quickly, um, the system that you've put into place, is that yeah. transferable to other countries in a nutshell? Uh, it depends a little bit how these countries are really um, um, built up. So um, it's really, the, the, it must be in, in at the, the animal holders and the farmers, they must really be, a, a conf, they must be confident that with this database is not given to any any person. So they really must mm -hmm. rely on, on this, um, the security of their data. And if you have mm -hmm. such a, a base in, in a country, it could be possible that um, that you can that can imagine to copy it uh, to other countries. Yes, we also um, showed it to one or two countries because they had the same questions, and um, I don't know what they did at the end, but um, but um, yeah, it, it could be an uh, initiative. And maybe Thank one thing much, I, uh, I, I would mention is the global agenda of sustainable livestock hosted by the FAO. That's a multi-stakeholder yeah. partnership with a view of enhance the contribution of livestock systems to sustainable development in one health. And there could be also a, 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 com, a, a possibility to, to um, inform it in, in, this, in this way. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, also uh, for giving us sort of the, the greater view. Um, now, we've, we've concentrated on national, on governmental solutions, and, and of course, everybody is also looking at business, uh, the agro-business side, what can they contribute? And uh, I know it's uh, early for you, Eric uh, Feivold, Chief Executive Officer uh, um, of the Syngenta Group. Uh, it's probably four o'clock uh, in the US uh, where you are right at the moment. So um, on your website, uh, on Syngenta website, it actually says that you're looking at five uh, areas that will take us into the future that are really innovative. And funnily enough, you have bees and drones in one, artificial intelligence, blockchain, you have urban agriculture and farming, and of course, genetic edi uh, editing. But where do you see the role of business, of their contribution? to what we need in order to fulfill all our dreams of feeding the world and having a balanced ecosystem. Great. Well, thank you, dear ministers. It's a real honor for the Syngenta Group to be represented here at an event that has become such an important part of the global discussion. And, and first, let me thank the FAO and DG Chu 
uh, for the invitation to take part in the panel today. I think this sends an important signal about the need for public and private sector to work together to address many of the challenges we face, not the least of tackling COVID and food security together. And the security of our food system clearly is vital. And as climate change and COVID have both demonstrated, our food supply is fragile. One of the most important things for us has been the recognition of our industry as critical one by governments around the world, because this allowed us to get workers to our sites. And by the way, we hired and trained many additional workers and are still doing that to assure that we can always operate our facilities. And some of our workers have been fearful for their lives, but I'll tell you, they go to work out of the responsibility and the purpose to help make sure the world has enough food. And I just want to give you a couple of quick examples that I think illustrate well, the, 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 the extent people go to to try to be helpful. In Monte, Switzerland, where we have our largest production site in the world, our team there responded to an urgent appeal by the Swiss authorities, and we produced 50 tons of hand sanitizers for hospitals that couldn't get them. In Pune, India, we have a cauliflower seed breeding site that needed to harvest to prepare for the next season. But due to COVID, the only staff allowed on the site was a security guard. Well, through Zoom technology, he got instructions from a breeder by video conference on how to do the, to, the harvesting. He was able to complete it, and today he's part of our Syngenta breeding team. <laughs> uh, one <laughs> other example, in Nigeria, the Syngenta Foundation, together with the Ministry of Agriculture and others, arranged sorghum and cowpea seeds delivery to 700 particularly vulnerable smallholder uh, so that they could get enough to plant, plant food and, and have it for them and their, their communities. So it's not a choice whether we deal with food security. COVID and climate change at the same time are forcing us to do that. In fact, you've seen in the last year, the commodity prices, corn, soybeans, wheat, have gone up substantially, 50% higher than they were a year ago. We have to keep improving our, our, our production capability in the face of climate change. And that's why we've dedicated $2 billion over the next five years to drive a step change in sustainable agriculture that works despite climate change-driven weather extremes. Two quick yeah. examples. One is um, seeds that can grow in drought conditions and the other is a project to bring a million hectares of degraded pasture land in Brazil back to production. And with that, I need to interrupt you because uh, we want to hear your second time round. Uh, thank you very much for giving these specific examples, uh, which are both very colorful and also very exemplary. Now, um, it, it would have been a good sort of uh, connection to Mr. Hofer and the solution that is in place in Switzerland, uh, because there's one word we all have uh, learned uh, throughout the um, pandemic, and that's zoonosis. Now, attention uh, was being for the first uh, time by a general public and not just by uh, the experts, how infectious diseases originated in animals that they have then spread to humans. And we had the minister explaining uh, the different steps and how the ministers are going to actually sort of uh, take uh, care of that uh, under the One Health approach that they're going to put also uh, into this uh, uh, end of the week's paper. But Let's turn to South Africa. Of course, uh, we all know why do tourists go to South Africa because of your wonderful wildlife. And it's not astonishing that there is a special need to have a special look at the situation uh, on the ground and about potential risk that are run. So again, the question to South Africa, how do you live the One Health approach and maybe whatever you've learned, how can it be transferred to other countries? Minister? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, our program director and to our panelists. Indeed, I must say, uh, maybe before starting South Africa level, I must just say, at a continental level, looking at how we must respond going forward, there are certain things that we've identified in terms of one, in, in relation to One Health. One is that there is a significant lack of attention and support 
wildlife issues, the lack of a functional One Health platform at the continental, regional, and member states level. And thirdly, that there's a need to enhance advocacy capacity by building in our successes of achieving important targets such as animal disease prevention, control, and eradication, as well as educating citizens about the importance of animal health as well as the link to human health. South Africa for itself has established a surveillance program that routinely samples for circulating viruses in wildlife species of interest, particularly bats. In our case, the Kruger National Park, which is indeed one of the tourist uh, areas, presents a very good interface area as the majority of wildlife is found in the bigger wildlife park. My department has stationed veterinary staff at the park to specifically monitor animal disease and movements inside the park and be able to detect any possible interaction with other animals, including livestock, if that happens. The interactions of animals within the park is significant to monitor transmission of diseases between animals, including the interspecies transmission. Some diseases like anthrax and tuberculosis, which are bacterial and not viral, are of significant importance, and these are well-known zoonoses. Data collection and management are extremely critical for epidemiological assessments and surveillance of different ecosystems and interface of wildlife and domestic animals. The veterinarians have placed special microchips on some selected animals to monitor their behavior and interactions with other animals, humans and possible livestock. The data of these inter interactions is transmitted by satellite to a database for capturing. As a result, an established, established surveillance system which is used to detect any possible spillover from the interactions and appropriate, appropriate actions are then taken should it be necessary. Accompanied by this is our very good laboratory support and also the latest technologies that we have actually put in place to make sure that we can deal with issues of sequencing and improve our capacity to determine genetic makeup of these viruses and any other differences that may show with what we have on record. We have also ensured so, the building of our staff. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Minister, is that transferable to other countries? Um, can some uh, other countries come to you and say, how did you solve it and can we transfer it? It is transferable and we have a lot of actually exchange in terms of development of uh, various uh, programs with within the continent, but also externally in terms of our agricultural research as well as our animal research. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the One Health approach uh, is not a new concept. It's actually been around since the beginning of the 2000s, I mean, almost 20 years. And um, there are three big corporation uh, uh, partners. That's, of course, uh, the WHO, the World Organization of Animal Health and FAO. So I'd like uh, to uh, invite Chu Dong Yu to quickly come in talk about that, but please, could you also uh, take into account a question that we've had from the audience um, uh, as a second aspect. How can FAO and allied partners innovatively support developing countries to push for localization of agriculture production? That would be uh, very nice. And all of that, of course, briefly, because otherwise we will get over our time. Uh, I, will, I will use one minute. So. First, I think FAO, we are ready to already support the One Health approach. It's a timely and a highly important now during pandemic, after pandemic. And that's why I participated in the uh, One Planning Summit together with the President Macron and also uh, Mark, uh, Chancellor Macron. Second, yeah. we support the One Health uh, high, uh, high Level Expert Council. And we have to look at all the uh, issues related to in, inter interconnected context, not holistic way. Third, we support the members to build up their capacity, especially by the information. We, we build up the already uh, hand-in-hand geospatial uh, uh, platform 
and we will use the also inter international platform for digital food and culture to look at all the uh, big data surrounding the animals, environment, and agro-food systems. That's it's a way to address the each specific problem in each specific members. And then we can share the information. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. And now let's uh, really concentrate on digitalization. And uh, for that, uh, let me return to Uzbekistan and uh, to Minister Kodyaev. Uh, um, can you share with us um, what you actually did uh, and uh, how you are proceeding in the next year also to strengthen the national sanitary and phytosanitary systems with digitization, please? Thank you for your question. Actually, in Uzbekistan, we are quite at the early stage in development of the digital solution to help uh, to improve our food system and enhance the national food security. Uh, well, uh, one of the most immediate priorities which we are focused upon uh, is the improving our agri-food information, statistics and data management system. And we can improve the flow of data on the sector and more effectively monitor any change. We can use this information to better identify problems and guide the design uh, of a better policies and programs to address them. Therefore, in 2021, we are planning to launch a range of initiatives to gradually upgrade our, our agri-food data collection system and improve the quality of the uh, sector statistics and information and also in parallel to develop a range of new public information services to provide the farmers with the information that they need to manage their businesses and ensure the quality and the safety of their production. So as a public-private partnership, uh, we are uh, in a very distant uh, areas. It's really tough to connect to the broadband or the internet and use the technology. So we are trying to uh, set our uh, ministries uh, offices there where, they, where the farmers they can come over and uh, they can use the internet and they can get all the information that would be a part of the, our uh, ACUS related services and of course we are developing the agri-food e-marketplace where uh, we recognize that many of our small-scale farmers lack market information and lack access to the market or the, any uh, sanitary information. And through the creation of this uh, electronic agriculture marketplace or platform, we will be able to provide more accessible, transparent information and a trading space to bring producers and the purchases of agriculture agri goods and services together. So it's, it, it won't be only the marketplace, but it will be the place where the farmers can get all the services uh, and they can get all the information they need. So uh, we are working on this platform with the help of the uh, EU experts and the World Bank support. And uh, it will be an online resources to be used by the individual farmers and the group of the farmers to identify and purchase, of course, the essential farmer inputs like seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, and uh, the other products for sale for, for, from their production. So I think uh, uh, this would be as the uh, beginning uh, of our uh, digitalization and helping the, uh, to improving on the food security. Uh, we, uh, we are now working Mr. on... That's absolutely fantastic. We really are running out of time. So please forgive me if I sort of turn over to Switzerland. Um, you've just said sort of um, there are the basics and what you have said is that you actually need international cooperation uh, and then of course a national system. Now, Switzerland has actually um, gotten the networking uh, on a different level. Um, you've actually brought uh, together researchers, education people, extension 
mentioned farmers, private sector, you name it, you've actually brought them together on a charter of digitization um, of Swiss uh, food and agriculture. A, how did you get all of them uh, under one roof, uh, more or less? Uh, it's almost probably like herding cats. And on the other hand, uh, is such a system something, again, that's transferable? Mr. Hofer? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for that question. Yes, to follow and guide the increasing application of digitalization in agriculture and food production and to increase networking, um, the Swiss government took this initiative you mentioned to launch AgriDigital. That's a multi stakeholder platform with interested actors from the food chain. Um, the first step was to develop a charter with the following objectives to create and share understanding of the principles governing the handling and of digital data and applications to jointly address the opportunities and challenges of digitalization along the value chain to support an inclusive, transparent and sustainable shift towards digital processes, to ensure fair and equitable access to the digital world, to bring actors together. And it was the federal councillor in charge of agriculture launched the charter on the digitalization of Swiss agriculture and fruit production in June 2018. The charter sets out 12 guidelines from focus on benefits to technological development, including including access to data and data ownership. So far, more than 120 public and private actors have signed the charter. Uh, the signatories commit to comply with these guidelines to actively contribute to implementation of the charter through specific initiatives and to communicate such efforts to take the principles of the charter into account in their strategic decision making and to pursue joint solutions in the digitalization of Swiss agriculture and food production. Um, one example was um, the program FLOP, an optimization of plant protection through precision farming, a joint initiative between a research and three cantal states involving more than 50 farmers. On this issue, I welcome the establishment also under the leadership of FAO of, um, <coughs> of the International Platform for Digital Food and Agriculture as follow of the GFFA in 2019, which pursues the same objectives of the global level. Switzerland is looking forward to actively contributing to this platform. And I think it's really, uh, um, you, you asked if you can really transfer that to other countries, I think um, this uh, charter we we um, we did it was really a, a very important um, 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 point of communication because uh, mm -hmm. digitalization was to that moment uh, something that was very abstract. And uh, the discussion to to make this charter and to 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 really talk about um, about these uh, rules, how to lead digitalization, how to use the data. Um, this, this, this was the, the thing that was very, very important. And I think you can also transfer that to other countries. It must be people there that want to, to make the dialogue and to discuss that and at the end to sign some guidelines and that helps then to everybody. And I think in this Thank second edition, yeah. Sorry. You were just finishing your sentence. <laughs> Yeah, this may be one thing that is, is interesting. That's the second edition. Um, we also have this um, uh, international award for innovation in sustainable agriculture and food system co-sponsored by FAO and Switzerland. And this second edition will be awarded during 2021 FAO conference and the call candidatures will be issued next week. Wonderful. And uh, that's a good thing for anybody who is out there who is actually uh, doing good work in that direction. Uh, so yeah. watch the uh, homepage uh, in about all means. Uh, now, uh, we should not give the impression that agriculture is all about digitization, but that is the issue that we're discussing right at the moment. Of course, there still need to be people to actually grow something, uh, farmers, and even with the help of digitization, security people in India who suddenly saw 
sort of uh, uh, become uh, really innovative and become uh, stand-in farmers. But of course, that's not the norm. And with that, we're with Syngenta again. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Freiwald, of course, uh, Syngenta is helping real farmers on the ground with products, with help, with training. But they are also, and let's return again to the digitization aspect, there are many things that can help farmers do things easier. For example, uh, if you have uh, protocols, for example, uh, if you want to shift your food, if you want to sell your food, if you uh, want to uh, call, communicate um, with somebody who is buying the food from you. So what do you have uh, on that side? How do you engage with farmers? But we have increasing, really exciting digital projects going on all over the, around the world with farmers and then all the way to, to consumers. But I think one of the most exciting that I want to describe here today is, is in China, we've created something called map centers for modern agriculture platform centers. And today we have 327 map centers across China after three years. We plan to get to 1,000 map centers within the next three years. These MAP centers are full solution centers for the farmers. They teach the farmers what to, 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 to plant. Uh, they get the modern seeds, modern uh, crop protection pesticides, modern fertilizers, and teach them through digital tools what, when to plant and how much to plant. And what amazing, the, these farms have, have come out with far less use of pesticides, far less use of fertilizers, and, and yet much higher yields and higher quality. What's really exciting is, is using these protocols, the farmers have leapfrogged from ancient farming techniques to very modern techniques, and, and, and the, the higher quality has, been, has drawn demand from consumers. And I'll show you a picture here of strawberries grown in China, being sold at, this is a picture of strawberries being sold at a Hema store, which is an Alibaba <laughs> store. And on them, you have uh, our map logo. You can't, it's not very visible. You, you, you can hardly there. see it, uh, simply because you're, yeah. of course, in a green, <laughs> in an artificial yeah. background. So I'll make it better. I'll, I'll, I'll make it available. But there's also a QR code here. And that QR yeah. code allows the consumer to scan it and see a picture of uh, uh, see a picture yeah, of where the just where, 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 where it was, and then and then sustainability data and a picture of the farmer. So already the farmer is getting connected to the consumer, and the con consumer is getting connected to the farm. Yeah. This is yeah. the future of food, and the sustainability data that comes with that enhances the production quality and the yields of the farmer. So the farmer is more profitable. And this, this kind of approach, I believe, is something that can be very much extended around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think that was uh, really a tangible uh, issue. And it also reflects something uh, that COVID-19 uh, probably has done in the last year, that consumers are much more aware that we are part of this food system, that we are actually consuming something. And a lot of people have actually had to cook at home, uh, which otherwise they wouldn't have done. So uh, the connectivity to food and the food systems has become much closer. And with that, actually, we are almost at the end. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. But uh, this is uh, for two minutes. I can uh, invite the Director General of the FAO again to maybe come to a sum up uh, of this discussion. Uh, thank you. Thank you, my panelists. I really appreciate your, your wisdom and the contribution. And uh, I, I really appreciate the uh, GFA and uh, of this platform. You know, the years we have to get the FAO connected with uh, with the global platform, which is GFA is one of the most important one. So I appreciate that. Second, I think the for innovation, I already said I don't want to repeat, but for a response to the uh, pandemic, COVID nineteen pandemic, build back better and greener and produce more and better. We need the innovation, only innovation solution. But it's very good to see now we, FAO, I don't want to repeat, we have a 
uh, masterpiece plan for the uh, response of the COVID-19, which is uh, seven areas, cover all the food security and food quality, food diversity and the environment and the climate change and, and so on, and the financial service, and also digital uh, 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 agriculture and food. And they, uh, just say like, uh, Eric said that in China, I spent so many years, huh? more than 10 years on that issues. So I want to bring this experience to the international uh, 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 platform. And the last on the list, I think uh, innovation, we need also political commitment. I'm very happy to see strong political commitment now from the America, new president. So it's it's a uh, Eric, another Eric, <laughs> is my friend of Eric Lander. He's my close uh, 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 scientific uh, ally. Because uh, 20, 30 years ago, we started genome sequencing. I was uh, on the uh, theta genome sequencing. So he was on the uh, genome uh, sequence of human being. We have a very close cooperation with BGI, uh, one gen there. So I think it's not political support is very important. Scientific uh, only offer the suggestion and uh, advice. Political should be implemented, and the businessman. That's why the p private sector, you are really task force. You know, combine the politician, innovation, scientist, and have the farmers build a linkage between the government and the farmers. So I appreciate Eric, all of you, uh, to uh, uh, help me in China. Not only your big one, and there's some small one also. We are talking about in South <laughs> Africa, in, in, in Uzbekistan. So please go to Uzbekistan, pick it up one commodity, make it happen. Because, you know, digitalization is only the reverse of the business to reduce the, all the production of agriculture input, seeds, chemicals, bioeconomy, you name it, and the biochemistry, uh, whatever. So that is uh, only the driving force. And the second driving force is the consumer. And so we need the consumer driving force to innovation. So without the innovation, no matter uh, 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 America or you smallholder farmers in, in, in Asia, in Latin America, in, in Africa, nowhere out. And in Europe, you can't depend on very traditional green technology. We have to build up a competitive green biotechnology and other uh, uh, innovative approach. So thank you, thank you for your support. We want to build a real big team and more political engagement from Europe, from China, from America, and of course from uh, uh, Africa. And that's real one world, one health, one planet, one human being. We only have uh, one human being in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for these uh, uh, final words uh, from Rome. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, whether you got up very early like Eric uh, or whether you are sort of uh, on European time zone. I think the challenges are very similar everywhere. Let me just uh, point to one aspect uh, that has transpired, despite the fact that we're talking about innovation, One Health, digitization, the one aspect that all of you mentioned even if it was just as a side, uh, was the question of training. You have to have educated, trained people in order to bring about what every one of you is actually working at. And uh, I think that's sort of one of the underlying issues also in food and agricultural systems. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say, if you want more, uh, we have the insurance by Syngenta that they will answer your questions uh, if you write to the email address that was given in the chat. I know from some colleagues that uh, the chat has been very well frequented and there was a parallel discussion going on in the chat. Sorry we couldn't uh, bring all the questions into our panel. We, ladies and gentlemen, have two more deep dives to offer and uh, we're very happy that the ministers from Uzbekistan and South Africa are willing to stay on 
on rather to dial in again for the one deep dive session that is coming up and for all of you ladies and gentlemen uh, if you want to know more the FAO has just uh, for the GFFA brought out a new brief and that's called opportunities for innovation in livestock systems so um, there is so much knowledge out there go out and grab it and continue discussion and I love the fact that despite it was digital uh, we already made the connection between some of the panelists so I hope that your conversation is going to go on and not finish this week at the GFA 2021 which of course is digital but it is a good place to discuss enjoy thank you very much uh, to this wonderful panel thanks and there's a one last uh, uh, announcement all of you uh, you are three, four uh, panelists Due to time limited, your speech, please send me to uh, to FLOCC. Uh, it's uh, for Office for the Communication. We will get you on on the. I will ask the director of OCC to conduct a, a few because you didn't read uh, all your text. <laughs> I want to get your full information and on the web of FLO. Thank you. Thank you so much. And with that, we will finish the session now. Thank you. Okay, Bye, Eric. See you next time. I'm coming to you, Ron. Bye-bye.